you know, it, it's a huge opportunity. It's a huge opportunity. And yeah. it's kind of one of those things that if you take it by the horns when it's still young, even though I say young, it's huge. But like in New Zealand, it's young. And it's one of those things that if you jump on that train now, um, yeah, you never know where it will go. And I don't think it's going to stop anytime soon. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Canon Conversations, the show where I sit down with some of the top photographers in the, in the industry so that you can become a better photographer. On today's show, we are talking all about TikTok, the platform that you have most likely heard of, but probably aren't using to promote your work. Well, that changes today because uh, we are going to be going through everything you need to know about TikTok, uh, how to use it to promote your work and why you would even want to. And uh, to guide us on our journey today, we have professional photographer and TikToker, Jono Cratley. Jono, thanks for joining me, man. Hey, bro. No, thank you so much. Hey. Um, huge honor to be on here. Awesome. Really sick. Look at man. Fantastic. Likewise. Um, before we jump in on the on the topic, would you mind giving us all a bit of a background on uh, you and your photography? Yeah, man. Yep. Uh, so uh, my, my photography journey uh, started probably about seven years ago now. Um, and, uh, quite a, quite a fun kind of like little thing. Um, my dad <laughs> picked up, I was studying something completely different, going on a completely different career path. And I picked up a camera, um, it was my dad's camera, picked it up and I was like, ah, oh, this, uh, I need to change what I'm doing. Um, and I just, you know, at the beginning it was a bit of a hobby. Um, and it was just like, yeah, going up, up into the park and just trying to shoot some stuff and seeing how it goes. And then, uh, I eventually... Uh, decided to uh, pursue it as like a career um, and actually study it as well. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. Nice, man. Fantastic. And um, any, I guess, particular sort of like niche of photography that sort of caught your interest first? Yeah. yeah. So I, my background kind of comes, to be honest, like the very, very, very beginning was actually uh, motorsport. So Speedway. Um, mm. I shot a lot of dirt track racing. So the guys that go around in, in circles on the dirt. Mm. Um, and I was shooting just stuff that was really different. I kind of um, decided to, uh, I wasn't an official photographer. Uh, and then one day I just mm. decided to rock up with a 7200 and <laughs> uh, kind of put on a high vis vest and see what happens. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and, and eventually I just started posting stuff and, and you know, caught people's eyes because just it was a little bit, um, a little bit different. A lot of the kind of the sports photographers that you see in Speedway just, um, you know, shooting sports, which is very different kind of, um, when you're shooting it more of an artistic way. So, um, yeah, it caught people's eyes. And, um, and from there, um, I started doing a little bit more commercial stuff. Um, I studied it. So I, I've just uh, finished my four year degree, uh, in a bachelor of fine arts. So I kind of have a fine art background as well. Um, and mm. then, and now I'm doing quite a lot of weddings as well. So, um, yeah, a whole heap of different um mm. you know also the landscape stuff and um i guess yeah. a lot of the kind of the landscape stuff that i've that i've been shooting kind of trickles into the the styles that i have with other stuff as well which is really cool um it's really cool to be able to take different styles and put it into your other work as well which yeah gives a unique yeah i mean i think it's a pretty common story for a lot of um photographers starting out where you've got lots of different little aspects where you're sort of dipping your toe into the world of professional photography and lots of different little aspects it starts in one niche and then you you know try weddings and then other bits and pieces come in here and there and it's all and they all influence um each other and sort of get your own unique style that way that's really 100%, cool 100 yeah man no, so that that kind of that's kind of how it started and um from now i've kind of i've just come back from overseas so i've been um i was living in sweden for seven months um which it was also a really, really interesting experience. And I can, you know, relate that to the TikTok stuff afterwards. Um, mm. But um, spent like two weeks in quarantine. And then, um, you know, now it's been like three months since I've been back. So just trying to, you know, get back out there and, and kind of start it again in a way um, and kind of have a clean slate, um, which is cool as well. Um, mm. um, yeah, it's really interesting. It's been good. <laughs> cool, man. And um, yeah, before we do go, go into, um, you know, the main topic, which is t TikTok, um, I'd love to talk through Instagram, which is a, a platform that I think a lot of people will be far more familiar with, um, and that you still you, you have quite a significant um, you know um, presence on Instagram. Would you mind talking through, um, yeah, how you use Instagram, your various accounts, how you built your following, how you use it to promote yourself, 
and then we'll kind of transition from there into how TikTok's a bit different. Sure, sure. Yeah, so I think uh, Instagram for me, um, I started it ages ago as well, and it was kind of one of those things where I actually started it even before um, before photography. Um, I kind of started yeah. it when, you know, we had those really weird, everyone graded it really weird, and we all had yeah. those, like, coffee shots and, uh, like, the, yeah. the kind of the fitness, you know, <laughs> like everyone posting yeah, yeah. their, like, yeah, I don't know, like, just the really, it- when it was cringy. <laughs> It looks it, it looks like every photo has been shot through like a piece of blue acetate or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, and actually, really, really interestingly enough, um, it's funny that like just you know I, I don't want to go into TikTok just yet, but just to, mm. to say that TikTok has been treated like that as well in a way, um, mm. very very closely to how Instagram used to be treated. You know, and then yeah. everyone was like started doing their cups, and everyone was like, oh, this is a bit weird. Um, and then now it's Instagram, and Instagram's massive. You know, so like mm. it's cool. Um, In terms of my Instagram journey, um, I honestly, I would have to say that Instagram is the main and biggest reason for um, a lot of my inspiration, um, as well as, um, you know, just seeing what other people are doing. Um, And also for my, like, my best friends, they all come from Instagram. So I think that, like, that community is huge. Um, Instagram for me... uh, I changed, it actually changed my life. I got to say that like a lot of the people that I know that are closest to me right now are through there. So, um, I used Instagram at the very beginning to just kind of, I was like, oh yeah, give it, give it a go, see what happens. Um, and because it's such a, you know, especially the kind of the landscape travel lifestyle photographers, um, everyone knows everyone, even though you've never met them, you know them because of Instagram, which is really cool. Um, and there's that, there, there is that community, you know, and, um, I think, yeah, we started that and then. Um, yeah, basically also try to, you know, kind of do the New Zealand Romas as well. Um, I don't know mm. if I should, I should jump into that now, but, um, yeah, yeah. the New Zealand Romas kind of came about, um, basically because I thought, you know, there's this huge community of photographers, um, and the New Zealand actually, uh, Romas actually started with 18 of us. So it was 18 of kind of the top, what we would consider like the lifestyle kind of guys that are, um, you know, uh, Liam, um, we had, we had like Sophie Piercy, all those guys that are kind of doing that sort of stuff. And, um, we wanted to basically create a community where we made people aware of going outside. And I think a lot of people, it's really interesting. A lot of people would write to uh, like, write to me at the beginning and say, Hey, oh, so jealous about the places you go to. Um, and in my mind, I'm going like, Hey, it's actually not that hard. Like a lot of people, are very confined to their kind of like house and they're like, okay, I'm comfortable where I am. But I mean, in New Zealand, you're like, I don't know, in Auckland, you're literally 15 minutes Mm -hmm. away from the beach, you know, like, so it's kind of, it's one of those things that's like, we wanted to kind of create a bit of an awareness that said, okay, it's not actually that hard to go out and create really cool photographs. And these are some examples. And so what we did is we created this feed um, with kind of the best photography around New Zealand. Um, and then also some of our stuff that we had and kind of used it to also have like Insta meets and all that kind of stuff. So we had two Insta meets, one, one in Piha, which was really cool. Um, one in the South Island. Um, so yeah, it was really, it was a really, really good opportunity to, you know, make people more aware of that community um, as opposed to just making it really clicky, mm-hmm. which I think, yeah. you know, there's that, you know, there's also that thing that, you know, people are, want to do it, um, but they also maybe don't want to write to people and say, hey, would you be keen to go on a mission or whatever? It's, yeah, mm-hmm. so that was that was a really cool, it was amazing how it grew. Um, and it was just a really cool thing to see people interact with it and just be excited to go out and just, you know, kind of rough it a little bit and create some cool content. So, yeah. Yeah. Have you, I guess, seen any, like, what's the relationship between that kind of, content where it's clearly um uh sort of self-actualized um there's no like company like paying you to do it and it's more about like community and building a following and stuff like how is that kind of content related to um your i guess professional work hmm um Honestly, I think a lot of the New Zealand Roma's idea was for it to be a passion project. Um, mm. So it wasn't really... I think we really just... The idea was to create an awareness um, as mm. opposed to making money out of it. Um, because, yeah, you, you know yourself as well how 
the kind of guys that are, you know, I don't know, you can talk about like Sam Calder and all those guys that mm. are like, you know, making, racking it and from traveling, it, it's, mm. it's so hard to do. It's so competitive. And I think mm. for us, it was more of a, a thing of, we were doing it anyway. Uh, the guys mm. that we were hanging out, we were like going out and doing missions and being like, oh, let's do this. Um, we were doing it anyway. So we're like, why not document it, put it on an Instagram feed and get and promote it to, you know, get people to do the same thing. And through mm. that, I think business wise through that we you know sponsorship opportunities and stuff arose as well to create and also to kind of collaborate with different brands which was really cool actually because mm. it was a it is now a really tight-knit group of us it's um so yeah like caleb adventure and kiwi guy uh, guy hassler liam vanderbeck which he, we had on the show mm. you had on the show uh and uh billy uh visuals so he so it's mm. five of us and it's really cool because we yeah we we've done um missions together adventures together and it's just been a, a really really good time to yeah we can discuss everything discuss um business side of things and then just like mm. just be mates and that's always yeah. awesome just inspires that eh? it's awesome it's really cool yeah because i think that's it's definitely it's this sort of um amorphous thing a having a a following like that where it's it it has all these sort of sideline benefits where it's like gives you an excuse to make content if you've got an audience who are interested in looking at it it it's a networking opportunity getting to like go out and make cool stuff with cool people you know that's all network building and then you get yeah things like sponsorship opportunities that come up so building a following on social media um, even if it's not related to your business like a lot of people think like oh, i want my you know my photo my photography business page to like have a big following so i can get work but just having those other like just a following in general is an asset in itself in all these different sorts of ways and i think that's sort of something to, for people to get in their head as we start to talk about tiktok and why you might want to start to build a following of it on it you know at the sort of ground level i say ground level because it's TikTok's been around for a while, but like we were talking earlier, it is in its infancy in the way that Instagram was in its infancy. And I think a lot of photographers would like think, oh, imagine if I got in on Instagram all those years ago when it was so easy. Well, you can do that now with TikTok. <laughs> um, and so I guess now this is, we'll use this as an opportunity to talk about TikTok. And um, where did you first hear about it? Yeah, yeah. So TikTok, honestly, man, was overseas. Um, mm -hmm. And ironically enough, that's, I guess, why we're having this conversation as well mm -hmm. is because you don't hear about it here um, mm -hmm. as much, as much. Mm -hmm. um, I think maybe Gen Z, kind of like generation yeah. where, you know, 14 to kind of 24 year olds, that's kind mm -hmm. of what their, their market, target market is. Um, but yeah. I heard about TikTok um, originally through a mate in Sweden, when I went to Sweden. Um, and after that, where it, when it actually became real is I started working for a social media marketing agency that dealt purely in TikTok. Mm. So that in itself tells you already that people are making a lot of money, a ton of money mm. off marketing it. So what this business did, and this is again, I, I guess... <sighs> you can relate this to photography as well, but what they were doing specifically, and I can kind of explain the, the business plan, what they kind of had was they used record labels to promote songs through TikTok. Okay, so for example, let's say there was, TikTok is all about music, right? TikTok um, is, is huge because of the music and people that go viral make songs go viral, right? So mm -hmm. what we did, I was a campaign manager for, this business for this company. It was a startup business and they grew so quickly that they were one of the fastest growing businesses in Sweden, which is, and the owners are 21 years old. Like it was insane, right? And what these guys did is they had, they worked with Sony. They worked with all the big, 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 because it's just, it's something that they became aware of and they're like, oh, there's actually a need for it. And they were like, hey, how about we create a, 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 a social media marketing agency around reaching out to influencers on TikTok that are big, mm. that can make moves, that can move like viral 
content, right? Mm -hmm. You can create viral content. And what they did was they reached out to influencers and said, we can pay you this much. And, but what we want to do is we want to create these campaigns. So we will tell you the creative side of it. Um, and we were in contact with the label and the label said, yep, this is, um, what we need. And they then created the content. And because of that, we created, or this business created viral music. There was music that was nothing before. And because mm. of TikTok, it became number one. And, yeah. and you can imagine that for artists, what that does, that gives artists a huge leap for it because it makes the money, basically. You go on mm. Spotify and the streams go up. So that was the yeah. game. The game was how, how, much, how many like viral music, uh, how many viral videos you can make and keep it at a lower cost. So that was the game. That was yeah. what we were dealing with. So um, yeah. that's where I, that's where it became real, real for me. That's where it kind of became, oh, wow, okay, people are making a lot of money off this and actually using it to promote themselves. They're using it to mm. promote music. So, um, so yeah, I found out about it basically, it would have been maybe, yeah, half a year ago now. Um, yeah. Which was awesome. It was really, really insane uh, realistic. Because at the beginning, I thought it was a bit of a joke. I was like, oh, yeah, cool. You guys are making money off TikTok. It's funny yeah. <laughs> you know yeah but you you're totally right there's songs that would have been nothing before like people might have heard um lemonade yep. or, or mood um these the, these like you know chart topping songs they're from tiktok they blew up because of tiktok because people use them in their videos and those videos went viral and through the nature of like what tiktok is seeing video after video and it's so trend based you end up hearing the same songs over and over again, so it gets stuck in your head, and then you know you end up singing these songs, yeah, and you download it, then you stream it, and then it goes from there. Um, absolutely. Um, let's sort of, I guess, maybe sort of take a real step back, f real quick, because um, we we might have sort of run away on a few people, and let's sort of, I guess, do real quick TikTok 101. How would you describe TikTok as a platform, and especially how it's different to the likes of Instagram? Yeah, man. So. TikTok, um, maybe what I can do is at the beginning, just kind of throw out a few stats mm. on, on kind of this, yeah. this platform and how big it is. Um, mm. At the moment, there are 100, uh, oops, there are 850 million users um, on yeah, this TikTok, yeah. on TikTok platform, yeah? Um, and it is the number one most downloaded app on the App Store. So, yeah. you know, above, Insta above mm. Instagram, yeah? And mm. TikTok, if you can make something go viral, on your first, so what TikTok does is TikTok will actually boost your first post. Mm -hmm. Really interesting. A lot, a lot of people know about that, but what it'll do is if you can create a viral piece of content mm -hmm. on your first post, you will be very successful. And there are people that go yeah. viral. Um, and and honestly, it's it, it's so TikTok is a, a monster. TikTok is its own monster mm -hmm. as opposed to Instagram. Instagram is also a monster. And, it's, and the algorithm of TikTok, uh, uh, the mm -hmm. algorithm of Instagram is, is so hard to figure out. And it has been mm -hmm. for so many years. Um, TikTok has so many, because it has so many people on there, the views, you can average three, 400 views, which is nothing. If you mm -hmm. try and do that on Instagram, it's still super hard to do, you know, it, yeah. it, as opposed to your following, as opposed to your ratio of following mm. to your views, right? And yeah, yeah, and I think that because that comes down to the architecture of TikTok, right? Where the the home page of TikTok is like the was it the, the the discovery page of Instagram, which no one really uses, but like TikTok as a platform puts like it doesn't put the content you follow in front of you first; it puts other content that you don't follow that you th that it thinks you might like in front of you first and that's how you can get so many different people um and the the huge volume of people seeing your content is because the home page is um not stuff that you necessarily follow Correct. tiktok's just throwing videos at you that it thinks thinks you you might like exactly so so tiktok has the for you page right so for mm. you is is this huge it's even a hashtag like for you on mm. uh, on tiktok is has billions and billions of like yeah. i think it has like 200 300 billion mm. videos made yeah. in that name right so it's mm. kind of like it's what it'll do at the beginning is it'll throw like you said it'll throw things at you and then eventually tiktok learns what you like watching mm. which is crazy the algorithm is insane on tiktok mm. um and basically the the idea is you have to find a niche similar to mm. instagram if you can find a niche that you know people are going to be interested in then 
you have a you have a very high success rate because it's kind of a thing that and, and, and also being unique that's the idea as well as you have to be unique and also you have to have something within the 30 so like in terms of tiktok 101 within the first 30 like three sorry three seconds of your video you need to grab people's attention and mm. what that does is it tells tiktok it'll tell the algorithm that people are watching it for three seconds and then it'll actually put your video on the for you page of other people and that's when it goes viral because in the end that's not how instagram works instagram works mm. you know you've got the hashtags but to get it out to a lot of people is quite hard it a tiktok mm. does that for you which is awesome yeah. like it's amazing <laughs> um mm. again it's it's not and now i'm not saying that tiktok is easy um at all and, and all, but the thing is, it is a lot easier than trying to figure out how to get viral on Instagram. Yeah, um, it, it, it is, it feels easier. And like to give people an idea, my first, so my, my first TikTok, and funny you mentioned that they, they promote the first video really highly. So my first video, actually, no, it wasn't my first, it was, it was my second video went viral. We, so like most of the most of the videos on my page, I've, I've only got like six, 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 six or seven. I've just been doing some sort of like testing. Like most have between between sort of a few like four hundred to a few thousand views. Then there's one video that's got seventy four thousand views, you know, like seven thousand likes, fifty comments, and it's just a video of me filming an Instagram story vertically on my C two hundred, like using like a big fat cinema camera vertically and that just happened to like trigger something in some people and then it went viral and then none of my other videos went viral just that one exactly exactly because it's because yeah. it's unique it's different and people are like oh man yeah. like what's this guy doing yeah. with it's like you know so you don't so like if you can do that um mm. then it then it's good the other thing that like tiktok is actually really also um really really that makes things go viral is if you can bring and, and actually this is this is in business in general if you can mm. offer value then yes. people are going to use it, right? So it, with TikTok, a lot of people are offering value and kind of that, that's actually kind of where my kind of TikTok is aimed towards mm. um, is, 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 you know, we go on adventures and mm. it's like, why not just share what we do and where we go and show people the mm. images that you can create from that place, right? And so people are like, oh my goodness, like I never knew that you could go to Piha and you could get a photo like that, for example, right? Yeah. Or you can go to this spot. And then so people save it. And because people... So on, on, Insta, uh, on TikTok, when you, when you like the post, it saves it for you. You would know this as well because you mm. probably have seen you have these saved posts mm. from liking them, right? And so mm. it's, it almost uses it, you almost use it as a, you know, people use it as a base to then mm. go and look back and be like, oh, okay, oh, there's a place in Queenstown that looks like this. You don't mm. necessarily tell them exactly where it is, but what yeah. it does is it, it, it kind of gives that hook of like, oh, I'm actually curious about where this is, so I'm going to save it yeah. and see if I can go there and take mm. the same photo. <laughs> you know, so yeah. it's cool. Like it, it, it works really well, and, and I kind of like that was the idea. You know, mm. it's almost got an element of Pinterest in that people like are sort of saving little ideas to little bins to use in the future. Absolutely. All right, man. Well, I think it's probably about time that we start talking about your TikTok videos. And uh, like you mentioned, you're going more on the sort of the value add um, basis. Um, so yeah, let, let's talk through, I guess, what made you sort of land on doing these sites? Well, first of all, t tell us a little bit about like exactly what types of videos you make and then what made you land on doing those sorts of videos in particular, um, only doing those sorts of videos because your videos all have a specific kind of s sort of little little bubble, little niche. Um, and what made you sort of stick in, in that sort of zone? Sure, sure. So my... Maybe I can go back to like what made my content go yeah. viral. <laughs> um, yeah. And yeah. I, I had one yeah. video that now has, I think, 800,000 views. Um, yeah. And that went, that was really interesting. I was doing TikTok mm. for a while. I was trying it out and seeing, and, and you know, maybe it got like, maybe got a few thousand, it got maybe got a thousand, two thousand here and there. And it was, it wasn't very regular, right? Mm. And so what I decided to do, um, and this is actually really funny because mm. it was exactly when I came back from, um, uh, from Sweden. Um, I went out, uh, we did a, uh, a mission down in Taranaki mm. and I was like, oh, this, you know, the Taranaki road, that's really, really famous. That kind of like, mm. you can shoot and shoot a 7200 and you can yeah. kind of make Taranaki massive in the background. Right? Yeah. And one thing you have to realize about TikTok is the people that are on there aren't professional photographers or they may be, but the majority of them are not, are not, um, mm. you know, people that are kind of doing this 
as, mm. as a career. Um, and I thought to myself, okay, let me see if I can create something on this road that would make people want to be like, oh my goodness, I live there. Mm. I've never seen that before ever. Mm. Okay. And that was the video that made it go viral. And that's actually the video that's now made, you know, my TikTok uh, keep going and do it like, be what it is basically. And, mm. um, it was it's crazy i think it, it has over a thousand shares it's it's all this kind of it, that made me realize that one tiktok helped me realize the algorithm in itself and what people like seeing um and it was amazing to, to actually use it even just as a not necessarily just because it was cool to see the numbers but it's also cool to see in a, in a um, more of an analytic perspective and to see mm how to how to get people and, and you know hook them up you know um and i used this kind of viral piece of music with a drop in it and then i had like mm. um guy walking on the road uh mm. also in bare feet um uh, which yeah. again that's also another thing that people are like oh my goodness that's so kiwi there's a dude in the yeah. middle of the road carrying like a camera a really nice camera and like shooting Taranaki and then I was like oh and this is the photo so we zoomed all the way mm. out and then it was a photo of like egg, like Taranaki and then guy really small in the in the foreground mm. right and yeah. um and yeah and, and that was kind of what started it all off and there i started realizing okay people really enjoy seeing adventures people really like seeing the before and after of the images that were created there mm. so my kind of idea or like what i was trying to do was try to get people to yeah like i said before to see these these places and to be able to then say oh like basically get people tagging their mates and saying hey road mm. trip and then they'll be like oh so yeah. sick and then they'll mm. tag people and they'll save it and it just it kind of ends up being this big role and and kind of you mm. know um yeah that was that was basically the idea and, and how it all started so yeah do you do you find you i guess feel a pressure to keep making very similar types of videos to sort of keep hooking on those same i guess like audience interests um and do you have ideas for other videos that you think mm, that probably wouldn't do so well on tiktok 100 percent, man 100 percent. um honestly there's so many videos that i've tried um mm. i'm honestly like half the half of my week is just mm. trying to um like create this content and see if you know if it works if it doesn't work um and then sometimes it'll it won't work at all it'll flop and i'll just delete it and i'll see if mm. and then i'll realize okay this doesn't work because of this um for example i put on um this is kind of an example just of something that did really badly and, and it kind of it makes complete sense when you when you know when you realize why <laughs> um but um i, I basically did a a video that showed um, the adventure tunes. I don't know. You get like, you get adventure bangers, mm. you know, these like, yeah. these kind of like drops music where you go like, you go on road trips, you put it on your stereo mm. and you have these like real good mm. bangers. Right. And, um, and I put that on there. I was like, okay, top five tunes to listen to in, in your car when you're on a road trip. Mm. And it flopped. It did horribly. Mm. And in my mind, I'm going like, Oh, that's really weird because the people that I'm reaching out to are, mm. are people that want to go on adventures. But then I also mm. realized that those kind of people that are wanting music are usually into like DJs or they're into, and those were the people that I was going to, to find out what content they were doing, you know? Mm. So like there has to be that direct link to what your, um, what your audience wants. And there is that pressure. There is hundred percent that pressure to try and create content that, you know, you might think, nah, nah, whatever. And then yeah. actually it does, you know, it does well because of that. Um, not yeah. Say- and, and, and where, where you, I guess, are different and can add value because, like you're saying, yeah, people are going to go to the likes of DJs for music recommendations, but they but but they're going to go for you to you for unique, you know, photographic locations recommendations, and that's where you can you know add value in the way that other people can't. Exactly, exactly, and 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 also you know the idea is also to kind of be a bit a bit tricky and just not really give the complete location of it. Um, Mm. And that's kind of also like, you know, there are also spots that we don't want to always, you know, there are people, the spots that people know about that also, you know, if you told them about it, you'd get a lot Mm. of, you know, um, Mm -hmm. and and it's kind of a little bit of secret. Yeah, exactly. And and you probably know Mm. about that as well. And, and and it's Mm. kind of, and I actually can, I actually agree with that. I don't think Mm. everyone should know about all these like amazing locations. Um, But I think that if you make it available and people that are, usually the people that will go there and try and find it also the people that will respect it, you know? So like, it's kind of, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. A little bit of a barrier just to, you know, weed out some of 
some of the, the people. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, in terms of the interactions on TikTok, have you found, like, how do they differ from those on Instagram? Um, are you, are you, now, do you mean in terms of comments or... Um, yeah, I guess I guess comments. I mean, we've already kind of talked about the the pure numbers because it's getting shared out to um, people who aren't following you. But I think because I I found that certainly um, translates to the comments as well. Similar in the way that YouTube does, where YouTube will spit out recommendations to channels that you don't follow, and then so you'll get a lot of people interacting who aren't your kind of like I guess core following in the way that you're like instagram following are you know are following you for a reason um yeah have you noticed like the i guess the comments or sorts of engagements on your tiktok videos that are so different to instagram yeah for sure for sure i think um the majority i feel like the people that follow me on my instagram are almost like you could say like they're like the diehards of that niche does that make sense so um Mm. it's more of like a (laughs) i feel like uh, you, you kind of get a bit of a fruit salad on TikTok where you get, mm. which actually is kind of good because mm. you get a lot yeah. more traffic. You get tons more traffic. Mm. Um, and as soon as, and it works similarly in, in terms of Instagram, when you start commenting on posts, um, mm. it puts it up, right? So um, yeah. when, you, when you're when you putting stuff, like the, the comments I'm getting on, on, um, on TikTok, are, 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 like there's so many different mm. kinds of people. Mm. There's a lot of, the thing with a lot of comments is you also get hate for it. So you'll yeah. get a lot of people saying, Oh, but that's not really the place. And I'm like, yeah, well, it's not, but uh, well, it is, but it's it's the shot from there. So, for example, I'll, I'll post a photo, for example, of um, there's a place here in Auckland called the uh, the Manukau Heads, and it was basically a shot um, of the light. I was standing on the lighthouse, looking out to the city, um, and there was this really crazy like cloud inversion up there, and it was like I oh, was awesome, and. Um, and one of the like the comments were like, wait, but this isn't Manukau here. This isn't like the lighthouse. That's the sky tower. And I'm like, yeah, but so you'll get people that will like literally yeah. just take the piss out of you for, yeah. you know, mm. for fame or just trying to like actually <laughs> ruin certain things. Yeah. But it's fine, yeah. Yeah, you get a lot of a lot of trolls and a lot of random exactly, comments exactly. for sure. But yeah, honestly, I always I always write that. down and I always at the bottom I'm always like, hey, thanks for the engagement. Like, you know, just like good, yeah. good. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Um I mean, I guess we've kind of talked about it a little bit sort of back and forward, but um maybe let, let, let's just try and I guess solidify what you feel makes good tiktok content compared to other platforms say there's you know photographers who are really familiar with instagram with posting their photos um and even like videos like even doing like like behind the scenes stories and stuff like um how can we sort of translate that sort of you know familiarity into uh something that's different for tiktok TikTok, yeah okay so Mm -hmm. This maybe yeah, this can kind of go maybe towards you know the people that are on Instagram and creating content and whatever. Um, mm. But something to always be aware of when you're on TikTok is that beautiful content will not always do well. Mm. So Instagram is very different in that sense, is that you can create a stunning image and it's a, a huge banger and everyone's like, oh my goodness, mm. this is insane. People on TikTok might not care about that mm. because that's not the people that you're really hitting um in a sense it's a different kind of platform it's a it's a platform where people are almost it's actually a really really hard thing to put into words but it's almost well, because like, it's video so because it's a video platform as opposed platform. to instagram which is more heavily weighted towards photography correct yes um and so you have to engage differently and people are on there for predominantly entertainment because you have to entertain them and and for the most part, just a beautiful photograph isn't enough entertainment. There has to be something, there has to be a story around it. Exactly. And you have to also think that like 40% of people on there, and that's actually a bit of a stat as well, is that 40% of the mm. people that are on there are between the ages of 16 and 24. So um, mm. above that, it's it's kind of like you get predominantly people that are younger generation as well. So mm. it kind of... A 16 year old's gonna be like, oh, cool photo, and then like, and not th- there's no value for them in a sense as yeah. well, you know. And and even like, yeah. and, and most people that are you know looking at a photograph will not be like, oh, that's an awesome grade, or that's a that mm. looks so moody, or it's you know it's like it's not like that. It's it's more of like the majority of people that 
are on my TikTok are going there because they want to find places to road trip. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah. But through that, I found this outlet to be then able to uh, like promote my work because mm. I'm in the end promoting the images I'm taking, even though it may be something in the back of their minds, it's still something that is going viral. Does that make sense? Mm. So it's still being, yeah. it's still being pushed out there, um, mm. which I think is, you know, a, a really cool thing. Um, yeah. But in terms of, yeah, like content, you need things that will, in the first three seconds, will literally grab someone and hook them and be like, oh, I want to mm. keep watching this video. Um, yeah. And so it, 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 there is that really fine balance. Um, for example, if you're posting, um, there, there are people, for example, that will post really cinematic videos, okay? So they'll post mm. literally stuff that is like uh, 1920, 1080, but they'll, if you flip your phone, then you're like this stunning like, image. That stuff doesn't mm. do well because... Yeah it's yeah it's really interesting it's just like really strange strange monster um and i think what you can do though is once you are almost creating stuff that's viral then you can start moving towards maybe more specifically what you enjoy doing because then you have the numbers mm -hmm. then people mm -hmm. are going to start because of the fact that they follow you and the fact that you're kind of there you know the the the, the person mm -hmm. that they go to to see cool content mm -hmm they'll start sharing that stuff as well. So yeah. um, I think at the beginning, you really need to do stuff almost more to, towards, you know, the TikTok side of things, um, which yeah. is fair enough. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because it's with the fact that the, the platform is so, like, is so much in its infancy and you can kind of play the system easier than you could on the likes of Instagram and stuff. Now is the opportunity to, yeah, do all the tricks in the book to try and like yeah build your following and and figure it, you know things out and that sounds that might sound a bit like depressing to people but it's actually a really um interesting creative challenge because there's so many different ideas and trends and different ways of thinking on tiktok that can affect your work in a really positive way like i've i've started incorporating tiktok trends um like from the video side of things into my like wedding videos like there's this one um really popular trend where people will like be in sort of like normal clothes and like just boring clothes and then they'll like throw their shoe up and then they'll kick their shoe and as they kick their shoe they're suddenly transformed into their like so fancy going thing. out gears yeah. or whatever and i put that in one of my wedding videos oh, where i had so the bride sick. like i had the bride in her like dressing gown she threw her shoe up she kicked it and then she's fully dressed and fully make up in a wedding gown Epic. And that's the kind of stuff that if you lean into those TikTok trends and lean into the different way of thinking on this platform, you can actually use it to grow yourself oh, beyond simply 100%. just doing the trends because why not? 100%. No, exactly. Why not? That's mm. literally it. And I think yeah. like a lot of, it's quite interesting. A lot of brands and businesses are very, very scared to, you know, it, it's a huge opportunity. It's a huge mm. opportunity. And yeah. it's kind of one of those things that, if you take it by the horns when it's still young, even though mm. I say young, it's huge. But like in New Zealand, it's young. And mm. it's one of those things that if you jump on that train now, um, yeah, you never know where it will go. And I don't yeah. think it's going to stop anytime soon. <laughs> no, no, no yeah. I, and that's like, that's, that was one of my questions. Um, and I think your experience in Sweden is going to speak a lot to this. You already kind of have, but um, I guess your thoughts on whether the platform is worth your time investment or whether you think it's just a just a fad because I think that's a lot of that's what's stopping a lot of people sort of taking that leap to go okay you know I need to sort of like apply a whole you know I've I've already filled up my weekly schedule you know I, how much more time can I put into this platform that might disappear next year and so would you mind talking a bit to that idea of TikTok just vanishing, vanishing like a fad, fad. Honestly, man, like I feel like the fact that people are using it for business now. If you compare mm. this to Vine, remember Vine is basically mm. yep. like is is the is the little sister of what TikTok is now, right? And yeah. um, I think if you take the fact that people are using it for business, Vine wasn't really used for business much, and mm. and I think it also died quite quickly. The fact that it's yeah. using being used for business shows already that it's something that will stay for a while because businesses are investing in it and they're investing a lot of money, man. Like, honestly, yeah. we were we were dealing with creators. Um, the top creator at the moment, Charlie D'Amelio, like, you probably heard the mm. name. It's, it's, it's everywhere. She's now the first content creator that's hit 100 million 
uh, followers on um, on TikTok, which is insane. Um, she charges fifty grand US for a video, mm. Mm. and and the thing is, people are paying that. Like people, are like, mm. the thing is, she hits like 13, 14 million views per video. Mm. Okay, yeah. so you can that's yeah. that's a huge investment, but it's also like mm. you try and hit fourteen million views on YouTube, it, like it yeah. won't happen. <laughs> like it's literally yeah. not gonna happen, you know? Yeah, and because eyeballs are, are eyeballs at the end of the day, and eyeballs have value in the advertising world, and so that's a yet, yet another, you know, sort of checkbox reason as to why building a following for the sake of building a following, if it's a legitimate following, it's a, if it's a following within your niche that's genuine it has value it's an asset that you can add to your business and i honestly Mm. that's the way that i looked at it i literally thought i said to myself Mm. okay let's see how this goes let's try it out um Mm. uniquely like yeah and and because of that one of those videos went viral i'm like okay now that this has happened i need to see this not necessarily as like oh i need to create another 15 second video and it's like eight o'clock in the evening and i don't want to do anything look at it as a like a business opportunity and Um, there will be people that will reach out to you in New Zealand because it's unique and it's, and it's a thing that in New Zealand, because it's so scarce and there are not a lot of influencers that are doing it. it, It's a huge opportunity. It's massive. Mm. Yeah, Um, it really, really is like for all the people that, yeah, sort of discount it and stuff. And I think because the majority of people on there are younger I mean, I, I, I heard, I heard like this viral piece of audio on TikTok a a few times where it's like to the older generation on TikTok who were born in the late nineties. And I was like, wait, what? Yeah. What? Me? (laughs) Nineties. Um, I've got a, I've got a decade on that. What are you talking about? (laughs) Yeah. You know, you definitely sort of feel out of your depth being like over 30 on TikTok. Um, (laughs) but it, it's, it is a legit platform. Yeah. It is legit. And it is, it is growing in New Zealand 100% 100% so if you can get in now and take adv- advantage of like the algorithm on easy mode before it you know becomes figured out like Instagram was figured out um, yeah you'll you, you you won't be kicking yourself three years from from now exactly and there are people I kid you not I have mm. talked to people about Instagram uh, about TikTok um, talk to them about um, you know <laughs> yeah I'm on TikTok I'm doing you know I'm doing videos or whatever mm. Oh, that's funny. Like, oh, that's a bit weird. I would never want to do that because it's... And I'm like, Mm. mate, there are people making millions off it. And Mm. not to say do it because of the money, do it as a business opportunity and do it because it's it it also... It's stimulating your brain in a different Mm. way. If you can... Yes, there's a lot of like crap on there. There's a lot of like Mm. stuff that is completely goes viral because it's useless basically and that, that's yeah. unfortunately the mm. the darker side of tiktok and and yeah. a lot of the people that are big on there are doing that but mm. why not create like why not create trends that are like useful and you can create things that are um that give value um and become big for that and that's when mm. yeah no, that's when it's going to grow and that's that's tiktok yeah. <laughs> it will grow T- totally man and and because I, I get what one story to kind of finish us on is that a lot of people, especially with photography businesses, think, "Oh, I don't want to do TikTok because I don't like the 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 brand of TikTok associated with my brand. I feel like my brand's kind of like too good or too, you know, I've, I'm 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 going for like a higher end thing, and TikTok I feel is going to like sort of um, degrade my sort of image." There are some wedding photographer friends of mine um, over in um, over in Melbourne, Bottle Brush Films. They're on TikTok. They're doing amazingly well on there, just making these like cool, silly um, viral videos, like mostly of their like f- clips from their wedding films. Behind the scenes. Yeah. And well, not even behind the scenes, like actual clips from like, like actual, the actual wedding films, like like sort of like funny bits of speeches and things like that, yeah, like proper awesome. things. They got from one of their videos 30 inquiries in a day. There you go. Proper inquiries through their website for people inquiring about their wedding film service from a TikTok video. So that tells you something about like it not being useless traffic. Cause I think that's again, another thing people think like sure it's traffic, but it's useless traffic. Um, but it's not, if you build your niche correctly, if you, if you, if you appeal to the people you want to appeal to, it is real traffic. And, and think about the people just as also Mm. as like a side note as well. Mm. 
think about the parents of the people that are watching this just also as a thing as well it, yeah. there is there are always like the second almost like second hand like eyes that are always mm. like there are people watching now you know and there are people on there that mm. are not under like there are people that are older and there are people that are there's yeah there's grandmas on there doing stuff like mm. yeah you know it's like it, it, it's not i think to say that tiktok is is cringy is is exactly mm. like what instagram used to be and i think it's yeah. it's very it's almost like quite a an old way of thinking because mm. you have to to get almost with the times and to be able to you know become better at what you do in a sense as well even like to think differently and as a business opportunity mm. you have to do it and it's like yeah it might be like oh i don't want to do this i don't want to do this this is going to look really weird in front of everyone yeah mm. when you're making money and and racking it in mm. because of that then you can say hey like you know, it was worth it. It was worth it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic, man. Well, I think that's a great, great place for us to finish. Um, and yeah, that was, that was really cool. And hopefully that has shifted a few people's mindsets on the platform. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, thanks so much for coming on the show, man. It was really interesting getting to uh, chat with you um, quite in depth on TikTok yeah, and good. I kind of want to go back and figure out how many how many times we said the word TikTok <laughs> you, too many. you need to have like a counter at the top of I, I, I think I think no I'm not gonna <laughs> it'll go too high um, but yeah thank you so much for your time it's, it, it's been great to get to meet you and, and chat dude like really appreciate it it was awesome really really cool okay, okay, man. really appreciate fantastic. it fantastic and um, yeah it's actually so I guess um, now would be a great time to mention that this is actually our last episode of the season so this is going to be our final episode for season one huge um and yeah we'll be back um in the new year with season two uh thank you guys so much all for watching it's been really cool to do this project um try out something new with canon um we've had some great feedback and we're really looking forward to um yeah jumping into season two and getting to talk with and meet with some more awesome new zealand photographers and videographers so yeah, um, thanks again, Jono, and we'll see you guys next year. Bye. Bye.